Hi, my name is Attila Springer. I'm a cultural worker, artist, activist, writer from Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm here to talk to you about some of my favorite songs. I have four songs um, that I really like and enjoy, and I think that they kind of give a sense of what the range of soca music and calypso is and, and what it means in the carnival space. You know, there was a late great um, pan composer by the name of Clive Bradley, and he talked about this golden thread running through steel pan, calypso, and the mass, and how these three things need to have each other in order to um, be, in order for carnival to be carnival. So, yeah, I want to I want to remember that sentiment of Clive Bradley that all three things go together, and that's for lots of specific historical reasons. Um, when we think about calypso and its origin and its where it comes from, I picture the Orisha Yard, the Orisha Yard of Laventille, the Orisha Yard of Belmont the Orisha Yard of um, Woodbrook, you know, in these spaces, and you can go to them up till today and you will see that energy, that um, connection to the drum that drives the music of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so my first song that I really want to talk about is one that won the Road March in 1986. And that's a song by the great David Rudder, um, it's called Bahia Girl. And Bahia Girl is not just important because in it he sings about picking up this woman who is from Brazil and they have a good time together. But this woman from Brazil also makes a point to him, which is that Trinidad and Brazil have the same vibration. Ileife, Ileife, she make me to understand. No, Ileife, if you don't know, is the spiritual and uh, um, social home of Yoruba people, who many of whom came to Trinidad, specifically after the emancipation period. There was several thousand um, Yoruba people who had come to Trinidad as part of an indentureship program. So before Indians were brought here as indentured laborers. They were Africans who were brought here as indentured laborers. And <clears throat> the group of indentured laborers that came to Trinidad from Africa was specifically from Oyo State, which is why our African Yoruba spiritual practice for many years was known as Shango, because so many of the people who came to Trinidad from Yoruba land were from Oyo State and they were devotees and followers of Shango. Um, so you hear that Shango in the music, particularly in the Calypso music. And this is what David Rudder is tapping into when he sings about <coughs> Ileife, Ileife, make, she make me to understand. So the second tune I'm gonna talk about, of course I have to include um, Winston Bailey in the shadow who is yeah, he's basically my favorite Calypsonian of all time because he knows us. He knows the acutely Trinbegonian psyche to T, but he also understands uh, philosophy and he also understands the importance of music as a tool of freedom, as a tool of liberation, as a tool of transcendence of our space, our time, our bodies. So the song that I want to give you from The Great Shadow is Dingole. Now, this song did not win a road march in Trinidad, but if you ever want to play a tune that gets Trini's moving, this would be the song. It's called Dingole. Um, actually, the song is called Music, but everybody calls it Dingole. Dingole being a part of our language, which means, you know, you could enjoy yourself, free up, loosen, Dingole. 
enjoy yourself. Be, um, be in your body and be free. And this tune that Shadow sang in the early 90s, you know, it's so beautiful in so many ways, but mostly because it's so simple. The message is so simple. Music fills the world with happiness, plenty, sweetness, and togetherness. Music have no friend or enemy. Everybody could dingle. So just erasing all of the class and race and colonial fear that we, we carry around. When you enter a fete, when you enter the carnival space, you are free of all of those burdens. You are free of all of those strictures. You are free of all of those boxes. And uh, Shadow is able to capture that energy, that desire to be free, to dingole, to be in the street with your people, to look, out, look outside, look to the side of you and see your old friend who you haven't seen for many years, or to see the judge who was trying your case last week and <laughs> found you guilty and fined you a whole set of money. And, you know, you could hug him up and say, yeah, that's all right. So it go. Um, you know, music being that thing that brings us together. I really love and appreciate Shadow for singing that song and reminding us that music is what um, makes sense of the world in all of this chaos and madness. Okay, so my third song is just for pleasure and wildness which is really the whole point of Carnival. This tune um, came out in 2018, 2019. Um, and I remember the first time I heard it, I was like, this tune is the tune. It was my favorite song for that year. Not particularly because I'm a huge fan of the artist. The, the singer is Nessa Preppy. And the song is, is a snack. So it's a bit of a slack tune, but <laughs> to me, it captures the energy of the festival. And it also captures the energy of what women are doing with the festival now, which is claiming it for themselves and saying that um, we are free of the male gaze. We really don't care if the men are there or not. We are here to enjoy ourselves to enjoy being in our bodies without any judgment, without any restriction, and without anybody saying, well, you can't do that, or you could only whine like this, or, you know, so, so it's a snack for me was a kind of assertion of, of this generation of women that, you know, carnival is ours. And carnival has always been about women, absolutely. But there's a different kind of energy in the, the women of this generation. You know, you see so many videos in the last couple of years of women deliberately shoving men away from them, <laughs> kicking men down, running away, pushing them away. Um, because carnival is supposed to be about freedom. It's not about me giving you access to my Bamsi, right? If I choose to give you access to my Bamsi, then take your wine, say thanks, and move on. It's not about you setting up real estate on my Bamsi or about you feeling that because you get a wine, that is an invitation or an acknowledgement that you are any more important to me than just me whining on you and looking cute on the road. So <laughs> there's, a kind of, um, there's a kind of assertiveness in, in that um, sexual identity that women are presenting right now, which I find really refreshing. And uh, considering all that is going on in the society right now, considering that so many women lose their lives in battles um, that are around domestic violence. There are women who are, you know, at least once a week, there's a story in the newspapers about a man who is spurned and who goes back to get revenge and kills this woman and her children and then himself. Or he might be still living and he has killed this woman because she does not want him anymore. And 
I feel like in moments like carnival, you have an opportunity for women to, to just be themselves and to just be without all of the weight and burden of living in a society that is so inherently violent against women's bodies constantly. So for, for women to, um, to take control again, and it's not that this is what the song is calling for us to do. It's not a call to arms, but there's something about the energy of how the lyrics are, uh, are delivered that just appeals to this kind of, um, you know, the bad thing, the baddest in me, you know. I just want to, you know, you just want to do what she said in the song. Real girl whining, real woman whining. You know, whining is is so important to who we are. It's so important to our center of gravity. And I don't ever want to feel like whining is something that I can't do because it's not decent or it's going to bring me unwanted attention. No, if I want to whine, I have every right to whine. And <laughs> I'm going to whine, goddammit. <laughs> so my final tune is Bushead. And this song was performed by Bungie Garlin and Marsha Montano, two of the hugest stars in the soca world to this day. Um, the song was performed in 2017. And I don't know, it, it, it seemed like it was a watershed moment for things happening in the society and things happening within the carnival. Um, people feeling frustrated with what carnival was becoming and and who who is the face of carnival what we see of the carnival um you know if you if you were to believe the advertising you would think that the only people who are involved in carnival are slim light-skinned um young women who are wearing a bikini and beads feathered costume but what this song that Bungie and Marshall sang did was it did two things historically socially and culturally one it brought together two supposedly rival soca artists in the same way that the the man who they're talking about in the song Joe Talmana brought together all of these rival stick fighters in 1881 they sing in the song um we come out hard to fight them like we named joe talmana and you know joe talmana is is a is an important historical figure in the mythology of the people's carnival the jamet carnival the carnival of the people not the carnival of the upper classes which happened in an ultra inclusive ultra exclusive space that was not made available to everybody else in the society. You had to have money, land, and um, a certain skin color in order to gain access to these spaces. And what the People's Carnival was, was an inclusive space for everyone. And in, within that carnival, you had the stick fight, you had the cambule, you had the, all of the traditional masks that we now identify as real mass but it was it was in these spaces that these um remnants and memories of african masking traditions lived and thrived and were performed on the streets and so for Bungie and marshall to sing a song that invokes that energy of that time when the carnival belonged to the people i thought was so radical and that year actually um I played Mass with All Stars, which is a steel band. And there was a moment when, well, All Stars that year played the song that won the road match, which was um, Full Extreme by Ultimate Rejects. And there was a moment when the band stopped playing All Stars and we were going up Charlotte Street and they started playing Bushead. And Bushead is not a fast tune, but for me, that was my road march that year. It was the song that made me feel the most emotionally connected to the carnival. 
It was the song that made me feel to wind the most in the road. It was the song that made me feel to hold my head and just, you know, scream out at the, the, the beauty of this thing we have called Carnival. It was just so magical and wonderful. And to see Bungie and Marshall perform this song together in FETS, to see them um, come together and have conversation. I actually hosted a conversation between them when um, the song was released. And, you know, to see that level of maturity and that level of vision come from two artists who we like to think are rivals, you know, it was just, it was just really beautiful and it, it gave me a lot of hope for what we can do with the arts if we are more deliberate, more strategic, and if we're not just chasing dollars. If we understand that we can connect our history and our story to something that is slamming, that is an amazing tune that could get people moving and could get people, you know, you had people of all walks of life singing about Olive, not even realizing that they were singing about a tree that grows in their yard. So, we need to do the next step of the of that cultural indoctrination, which is to now go and show children what an olive tree looks like and show children how to dance Kalinda and show children, you know, um, the connection between the story that we have to tell now and the stories that will be told about us in the future. So, so yeah. But said is definitely one of my favorite tunes. I still listen to it very often because, yeah, I like to keep that energy of the Kalinda, energy of the Lavwe, energy of the driving base of Soka. That slight menace, but that underlying joy and that underlying desire to live and be. You know, I love that about Soka music.